Okay. Yes. So general immunohistochemistry protocols. There are three important steps. Uh, by the way, am I audible? Are you listening, students? Are you following me? Yes, sir. Yes, very good. Okay. So general immunohistochemistry protocols. What are the three important steps in immunohistochemistry? So the first step is, um, yeah. So the first step is tissue preparation. We need to prepare the tissue. So tissue preparation includes fixation, section preparation, and mount preparation. Whole mount means entire uh, organ will be uh, prepared. Okay. We should go with the fixation. We should go for sectioning. Then we should we should prepare a mount. Okay. So this is called a tissue preparation. So fixation. Uh, what type of fixation we should use? We should use reversible fixation or the fixation that won't uh, destroy the proteins. Such fixatives we must use. So the first step will be tissue preparation. Somehow we need to prepare the tissue for immunohistochemistry. Then second part will be pre-treatment of tissue. Before going for actual staining, we need to treat the tissue. What are the uh, pre-treatments? Since the tissue is already went fixation, now that fixation will mask the proteins as we already seen the antigens. Now those antigens need to be unmasked. So that is the first step we are doing in pre-treatment. So the, in, the second, uh, in the second phase, the first thing is uh, antigen retrieval. So here, the, the masked antigens will be retrieved. How we can able to retrieve the masked antigens? That can be retrieved either by using certain proteolytic enzymes or by using heat induced methods, we can able to get back the antigens. Then you may ask me a question, sir, we, we are saying that uh, we want to retrieve the proteins, antigens, antigens are proteins and why we are using proteolytic enzyme. Proteolytic enzyme means the name we can see here, proteo, protein lytic, breaking down enzyme. How do a protein breaking and the enzyme will retrieve the protein, antigen, I mean. Here, listen students, collagen. Collagen is the protein that, that is the matrix of all these tissues. All tissues are binded together by this collagen fibers. This collagen is also a protein. So we will take collagenase, enzyme collagenase, that will act only on collagen, but not on the cellular uh, antigen proteins. Cellular antigens will be unaltered. They will be intact. Only the, the matrix protein, the collagen will be removed. That collagen can be removed either by using proteolytic enzymes or that, or that collagen can also be removed by using some heat induced methods. There is one, one name students, I forgot, HIR, heat induced antigen retrieval, HIER or something, there is a term, okay. So by that we can able to retrieve the antigens. Okay, now we got the antigens back, but still we need to consider the second problem. What is the second problem? Endogenous tissue components. Endogen, say for example, um, uh, peroxidases. Peroxidase already present in the tissue and peroxidase also present in our uh, reagent. Now the tissue peroxidase need to be inhibited. It need to be neutralized. So the tissue component uh, things need to be uh, neutralized. And that is the second step, inhibition of endogenous tissue components. Because this endogenous tissue components will react with the reagent and we will get false positive results. In order to rectify that false positive results, we need to do this uh, blocking of endogenous uh, components. And also as yes, uh, blocking of non-specific sites. So inhibition of endogenous enzymes. And second one, third one is blocking of non-specific sites. Okay. So what are these non-specific sites? Mm. Uh, how can I tell you non-specific sites? Um, antigens has a problem students. The problem with antigens is, mm, oh, sorry, sorry, antibodies. The problem with antibodies is, um, antibodies are not so precise at their binding sites. Uh, let me give you an analogy. Uh, for, say for example, my name. So my name is V-A-M-S-I, WOMSI. We can write, uh, okay, WOM, let us assume WOMSI is uh, antigen and I made an anti-WOMSI antibody. Okay, so I, I made an anti-WOMC antibody to target the WOMC antigen. Now, 
there is an another enzyme which resembles very closely to the 1c for say for example and the second antigen is vam cy instead of si it is replaced by cy still looks like 1c only vam cy also 1c so this the antibody we used for si vam si antibody this can cross react with the cy antigen also vam cy antigen can be cross reacted with this particular antibody so there will be off target binding of antibodies with similar antigenicity if if any two antigens looks very similar then the antibodies may falsely attach to the similar antigens also that is the problem so in order to nullify that issue uh, yes sir uh, chapanne uh, one second students i'm coming back okay sorry for the interruption students um yeah so that uh, 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 how we can able to block that non specific antigens means we need to uh, incubate the tissue in the serum of the same patient i'm telling again if we are taking tissue from one person one, from one patient we need to collect the same patient's serum also we know that in that serum we have uh, specific antibodies okay serum will have antibodies if we incubate his tissue in his own serum then his his natural antibodies will mask the entire tissue okay now only the uh, the background antigens will be masked and only the essential antigens will be exposed for that we will do a minor step okay so there is a there is a very clever technique of masking or blocking the uh, similar endogenous antigen similar looking antigens that can be done by uh, blocking some non specific sites okay so that we will see so this is the second step so first step is uh, uh, let me mute you all okay i'm getting some background noise let me mute you all hmm. okay so as i stated in the first step we are going to prepare the tissue tissue preparation include fixation sectioning mount preparation then second one is uh, uh, tissue pre treatment so pre treatment includes antigen retrieval inhibition of endogenous tissue components and blocking of non specific sites so this is the uh, three important steps we will do in the phase 2 okay the pre treatment of the tissue okay excuse Then, me sir ah uh, yes yes preeti sir like in third step blocking of non specific sites mm -hmm. sir uh, in this step we take the uh, we take the tissue mm. and we take the serum Yes, we have to incubate the tissue in the serum. Serum first. Sir, for how? Sir, for? then uh, for uh, how many time uh, take it takes? Ah, uh, that depends. How minutes? How many? Um, most uh, normally it will be half an hour, but that depends upon uh, the type of antigen we want. If it is a okay, we have two types of antigens. Since you asked, we have surface antigens and or. Uh, sir, antigens that are present on the surface of the cell and the antigens that present inside the cell, intracellular antigens, intracellular antigens like nuclear antigen, ribosomal antigens, this uh, mitochondrial antigens. Uh, if we want to go with intracellular antigens, then the incubation period will be uh, higher with uh, some uh, uh, some alterations in the method. We need to shake the sample. We need to set some glass beads and we need to keep the serum. tissue and we need to shake the tissue so that the surface anti surface antigens will be destroyed and the inter inner antigens will be exposed so there are certain methods of uh, um, blocking them first accessing them upon accessing we need to block them so that depends that depends upon the type of antigen we want uh, preeti okay uh, that we will see in the okay. in the coming classes okay yeah that is good question yeah so that depends upon the type of tissue tissue to tissue it will change okay so these are the generalized steps anyway so now we got some idea that we need to block that non specific sites or that epitopes epitopes paratopes i hope you know the antigen part and the antibody part anyway uh, yeah so those epitopes need to be masked blocked by uh, certain uh, serum normal serum okay so this is a part 2 then phase 3 the part 3 of this uh, thing will be the staining okay 
since we already blocked the, we, we, we retrieved the antigens, we blocked the enzymes, we blocked the non-specific antigens also. Then the third step will be going for straining. Okay. In the third step, now we will go with the primary antibody, secondary antibody, some processing time, then we will get the results. Okay. We will go for microscopic examination. So these are the three important steps in immunohistochemistry. Uh, the first one is fixation, oh, sorry, uh, tissue preparation, then uh, pretreatment of the tissue and staining of the tissue. Okay. Uh, now I'm telling again, please don't forget blocking in immunohistochemistry is different from block making in histopathology. That is entirely different. Okay. I got this problem with my previous students. Okay. They, they are confused with this blocking term. They thought block making means uh, immediately they are thinking low cut L moles, that immunopathology things. Okay. Here the blocking is all about uh, the antibody maskings. Okay. Blocking of uh, uh, not relevant uh, antigens. Okay. Irrelevant uh, antigens will be blocked here. Yeah. So that is the second step and third step will be the staining. Okay. Yeah. So yes. So let, let us uh, see the actual protocol uh, like this. So first we deparaffinize the tissue, then we, we went for antigen retrieval, then we went for a water treatment. This will be very simple steps. Um, let us do one thing. Hmm. What else they are discussing? These things, some basic things you need to know. Yes, you can see. Mm -hmm. For antigens, antibodies, epitopes, teratops, not required. Mm, this one. Uh, these steps are very nice. So, first we will go for biopsy. Okay. So, biopsy can be take, uh, it's a process of taking any sample from the body. Then we will go for fixation. It will be a special fixation. Okay. A, a different method of fixation we will go. Then uh, embedding, a different embedding, mounting, modified mounting methods. Then antigen retrieval. Yeah. I said, right? HIER heat induced epitope retrieval okay the part of antigen that will be in contact with antibody is called epitope the part of antibody that will be in contact with antigen is called paratope so here we are going to retrieve the epitopes of the antigen okay and that procedure is called hier heat induced epitope retrieval okay so that is antigen retrieval um, here they skipped something like they here they didn't say about a blocking okay blocking of endogen uh, uh, the inhibiting endogenous enzyme activity and blocking of non-specific antigens upon that we will go with a, a staining protocol staining protocols like primary antibody secondary antibody visualization and interpretation so this is the overall steps in the immunohistochemistry. chemistry okay fixation so now uh, in the fixation i would like to give you the basics of fixation first okay so let me open the fixation first uh, can you able to see this screen, students, by the way? Can you see my PDF? The PDF that I opened here? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Thank you. Actually, no, I don't know what you are seeing there. Uh, they should modify this Zoom things to do some updations like the viewers. Thing. Anyway, um, let me show you um, fixation things. Let me go directly to fixation. I kept a table. Now, ah, this one. Okay, how do we will fix a tissue? What is the definition of fixation? We already know that fixation means it is a, it is a process of preventing the tissue from decomposing by uh, making protein crosslinks, crosslinks among the proteins in the tissue. So how we are making the crosslinks in the proteins? What method we are approaching? Depending upon the method of uh, approach for protein crosslinking or protein denaturation, protein coagulation, Depending upon those methods, we have broadly classified fixation methods into two types. We have chemical methods and we have physical methods. Okay. Chemical methods, you already know all formalin, all those things are chemical methods. Acetone, uh, Jenkins fluid, uh, all those uh, uh, cytological fixatives that is Champis fluid, Carnot's fluid, all those are chemical fixatives. Okay. Uh, here also we have two types of uh, chemical fixative processes. Okay, one is immersion and the other one is perfusion. Immersion means here the entire block will be suspended in the fixative solution. That is called immersion. And perfusion means here um, 
we will induce we will inject the uh, fixative into the body by the vessels that is called perfusion okay either with the help of catheters with the help of syringes with the help of uh, tubings we will induce the uh, fixative fluid into the body okay usually this perfusion will be uh, we will do this okay i will tell you very good example of perfusion um, sometimes we don't want the specimen to be suspended in the uh, in the liquid media we want the specimen just like it is alive the entire specimen um, you know i'm taking a very extreme example but this happens regularly say for example if any celebrity a very famous celebrity died means it can be a politician any tv star or anyone uh, now he is dead his body uh, and uh, it takes at least 10 days for all the people to attend everything so we need to keep the body uh, in a life like state or at least without decomposing for next 10 days uh, but we can't immerse the body in a in a bucket full of formalin because people want to see him since he is a celebrity he or she so in such cases what we will do is we will start infusing the flu uh, the fixture to fluids into the body we will remove the blood from the patient from the dead body and we will replace the blood with the fixture to fluid since blood can able to access all the body now this fixture to will access all the body and they will uh, look uh, uh, fresh for next to 10 days um yeah this happens uh, recently some four years ago when this uh, tamil nadu chief minister died jailalitha she is a celebrity she is a, she is a cinema celebrity and also political celebrity so they did this one this is called embalming okay that embalming will be done by this perfusion technique okay it is a it is a modified fixation technique anyway uh, our chemical fixation we need not to mind in immunohistochemistry moreover in immunohistochemistry we will go with this uh, physical methods physical method of uh, fixing the tissues okay uh, it can be either freezing freezing the tissue or it can be drying the tissue okay by drying the tissue or by freezing the tissue we can able to uh, preserve the tissue usually we will take sucrose solution we will take a piece of tissue uh, we will take a small ice cube uh, so that uh, plate in the ice uh, okay cassette in the cassette we will keep the tissue and we will pour sucrose solution and this sucrose solution uh, cassette will be kept uh, subjected to the uh, cryo temperatures like minus 80 degrees centigrade at minus 80 degrees centigrade what happens it will become a block but the beauty of sucrose solution is sucrose solution once it is condensed once it becomes solid ice block it won't create crystals the crystal induced damage won't happen or the formation of crystals in the sucrose solution is comparatively lesser than water water will form this crystals and crystals will there is a likelihood of damage to the tissue but not with the sucrose solution sucrose solution is a somewhat uh, you know viscous and it also has uh, the sugar sugar can be utilized by the tissue so it will be a good uh, ideal uh, um, fixer to we can use for this one let me check whether i'm recording this session or not yes we are recording okay good uh, yeah so freeze drying free freezing is one technique and other one is drying simply let the smear to air dry even if it is air dry that is a type of fixation only uh, by the way uh, in my masters uh, uh, one of my professors said this thing uh, we are all, we are all are addicted to eating mummies you know mummies means uh, this uh, egyptian mummies uh, this uh, uh, this preservation is very old technique okay Yes, since 8000 years ago onwards we have this uh, uh, rituals of uh, uh, preserving human bodies starting from egyptians you know they become celebrities in this technique so how they preserve the bodies by keeping the by keeping salt in the uh, body you know they they will cut the body and they will keep salt and we know that salt is a very good dehydrating agent it will remove all the water if there is no water they won't the things won't you know decompose so yes uh, fixation is a very old technique okay so free that is a drying technique and uh, uh, i would like to emphasize few more points in this fixation especially on um, this uh, mummies uh, uh, now i said we we are eating mummies right 
uh, listen, uh, the art of preservation we are doing on our regular basis. So you know, right, these pickles, your mango pickle you are eating in your homes. So that mango pickle is a, it is a mummy of a mango, mango mummy, right? Because we suspended this mango in an oil, which has salt also. First, we will go with salt treatment. We will clean the mango pieces in salt water, then we will let it dry. Then we will suspend in the oil. So oil acting as a media, okay? It is an embedding media. And we kept this mango pieces in the, uh, uh, in the jar. So in one way or other way, yes, we are eating mango mummies or you, most people will eat, uh, I'm not uh, good at, uh, I, I don't prefer it, but uh, most people will eat this dry fishes in the market, right? So though, they are also mummies only. So anyway, so yes, this uh, art of uh, preventing decomposing is an uh, old art. Okay, this is a very old technique of uh, keeping the thing in lifelike state. That is the, all about the fixatives. Uh, anyway, in our immunohistochemistry, we are going with this uh, physical fixation uh, methods like either freezing or drying. We have one more method called microwaving. We can also subject the tissue to microwaves uh, for a very brief period of time. Maybe one to two seconds is enough for uh, um, microwaving the tissue. Okay, so they are the methods of uh, fixation. Uh, okay, so yes. Let us see a YouTube animation on uh, this immunohistochemistry, then we will get some more idea on uh, this one. Um, uh, anyway, um, on fixation, I want to tell one more point, students. I'm really interested in this fixation. Uh, that point is, um, how many of you heard about this, uh, this one called uh, the Sleeping Beauty? Uh, Lombardo, Rosalia Lombardo. Okay, I will tell the story of Rosalia Lombardo. I think uh, we are running out of time, students. If this session ended, kindly join back with the same link, okay? Please join back with the same link. Um, anyway, uh, I will tell about the Rosalia Lombardo. So there is a very good uh, you know, chemist and he has uh, a lovely daughter. He likes uh, his daughter a lot, you know? So she is uh, his uh, everything. One day, uh, his daughter got uh, tuberculosis and unfortunately at the age of four, his beloved doctor is expired. So he, the, this daughter is very gorgeous. She is so cute. And he is not ready to accept that uh, his daughter is no more. He want to see her daughter for lifetime. He don't want her daughter to you know, leave this world. So what he did, he went to a very famous uh, taxidermist. So taxidermist are someone who will uh, do this uh, uh, you know, taxidermy. They will, they will make this animal models, real animal models. Okay, so they went to this uh, taxidermist, and uh, we don't know what he did, but he he made a composition, and he, he he injected those things into the Rosalia, the dead body of Rosalia. Still today, this happened eighty years ago. Still today, Rosalia looks like a sleeping baby. She is sleeping in a bed now in one uh, museum. She looks like she, she is alive. She is just sleeping there. And, uh, and no one knows the exact composition of uh, uh, what he did to preserve in such a lifelike state. I would like to show you the picture of Rosalia Lombardo. So I will show you, see, Rosalia uh, Lombardo, Sleeping Beauty. The other name of her is Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, the Sleeping Beauty, Rosalia Lombardo, Ureto, somewhere in here, I will show you the picture. Ah, see, so this is a mummy. It is a dead body of 80 years old. So this is, see, her face, her hair, her cheeks, everything is like in lifelike state. And this is one of the best preserved sample that we have seen in the history Okay, so yes, this is the best fixation procedure we ever we never encountered. Okay, this is called uh, the Rosalia Lombardo, and there is some uh, you know some myths that uh, the Sleeping Beauty will open her eyes uh, periodically uh, now and then. Actually, that is due to the refraction of light. So if the light rays are coming from down, then her eyes are looking like open. Sometimes it will close. That is just a, a stories made by people. Uh, and that is the properties of physical light, not about the soul. Okay, 
so this is the sleeping beauty so this is one ex, uh, one more or less example of uh, uh, preserving the human bodies still today we can able to see her uh, body see how beautiful she is how natural like she is died recently so this is the story of rosalia lombardo and uh, uh, the tambalbing technique so we can still able to see her and this is the results of uh, fixation in one way or other way so yes then we got an advanced form of fixation so today we have a really advanced form of fixation and that is called uh, plastination so plastination is a advanced method of fixation where we can able to preserve body for almost 1000 years in its precise condition we are injecting polyvinyl resins the plastic resins into the body so that the pl body becoming plastic literally we will be plastic and uh, yeah plastination is really an advanced method of uh, preserving bodies and uh, there are some problems with this plastination the ethical considerations uh, do we plastinate a human body is it okay to plastinate a human body and keep a human body in the museum so there are many international ethics that are not allowing to do human plastinations but uh, there is a person called uh, uh, gunther hugens von gunther hugens from germany he is someone who has mastered at plastination technique and he want to make the human body museum the real human plastinated bodies of human museum so he went to the extreme where he developed this plastination techniques and i want to show you that uh, pictures of one uh, one gunther hugens uh, museum one second let me open it uh, plastination notes where i kept it issue fixation mm. okay plastination one second plastination yeah this one hmm. so in my masters i was supposed to take uh, a seminar on uh, fixation methods okay so at that time i prepared this slides so this is my master slides anyway um so here i'm telling all about the fixations then i went to the plastination so the advanced plastination i will show you yeah so whatever you are seeing right now here are the actual humans who has been plastinized so see the art now the uh, the medicine meets art now we have the sculptures of the actual human bodies so this is the real human body and it is plastinized these are the real bones these are the real muscles so here you can see that uh, his uh, muscular system has left his uh, uh, skeletal system something really interesting he took uh, the field of uh, uh, anatomy to the next uh, you know cutting edge to the next level uh, here you can see the beauty of the hand so th he induced uh, this plastinized uh, fluids into the hand into the blood vessels of hand and you can see all the vessels here so these are the uh, number of blood vessels we have in the hand blood vessels in the head and then the chest and blood vessels all over the body so yes the plastination become the next uh, uh, technology so this is all because of this one gunther hugens so he have he has pioneered in this uh, technology okay so yes pathology is really interesting subject histopathology all these museum techniques okay um how much time left oh, i think only one minute left kindly join back or uh, shall we close this session students or do i need to continue what is your thoughts actually my 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 method of teaching is first you should get the fascination about the subject if you become you know if you are interested in subject then you will study by yourself let me show you one gunther hugens Hugens body walls. Yes, this is the museum. The way he's preparing.
I don't know whether my audio visible to you or not. Yeah, so this is the plastination of human bodies. <laughs> 